Aloha and welcome to the Kapun Wiki Radio Show. This month we are talking with active agers and in studio we have Senator Suzanne Chan Oakland, Program Coordinator of Lanikila Multipurpose Senior Center. Kapun Wiki is Hawaii's senior resource. We talk to the best local professionals in the state regarding topics such as real estate, senior housing, estate planning, finance, and health so that our Kapuna families can find the best resources in the midst of a life transition. We strive to make sure our seniors are informed and supported every step of the way. Thanks for joining us again today. I'm Brandon Lau. And I'm Andrew Leon. Your host for the Kapuna Wiki Radio Show. Our title sponsor for today is Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors, providing you the best real estate information so you can make the most informed decisions. As they like to say, real estate is about choice. To contact them, call 753-9033. And now we have our Real Estate Tip of the Week brought to you by Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors. Thinking of selling your home? When you put your home up for sale, it becomes a product on display. Getting rid of clutter makes it easier for potential buyers to walk through the property and see themselves living there. You might also need to tackle a few home improvement projects to get a good price for your property. If you want to get the best offers from buyers, make a great first impression by improving these potential areas. Number one. Having newly painted walls and a neutral color to invite a potential buyer to imagine the home with their things in it while making it feel livable. Number two, freshen up your kitchen and make sure it's bright, clean, and reasonably updated. Number three, next to the next to the kitchen, uh, next to the kitchen, bathrooms are the other areas of the home that makes an impression on buyers. Consider refinishing your bathtub and surroundings as a cost-effective way to make the tub look new. For more tips on remodeling or preparing your home for the market, contact Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors at 753-9033. Again, today in studio, we have Suzanne Chan Oakland, uh, former senator of the Hawaii State Senate and current program coordinator of Lanikila Multipurpose Senior Center. Welcome, Suzanne. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. Nice to see you, Brandon. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're so glad you can join us. Now, I've always admired how committed you are to serving our community and in particular Kupuna because there's so many initiatives that you brought forth, uh, committees and programs that you initiated and I just want to applaud you for that. I think you've made a tremendous impact um, within the senior community but you continue to do so and that's why we brought you on the show is because we talk about active aging and um, Maybe you can just share with us, you know, maybe a little bit of your, your background, um, how you got involved in, you know, the legislature and helping serving in the community and why you're doing what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's fun to always talk about these types of things. <laughs> and I, when I was growing up in Leliha, mm-hmm. and that's where I still live, right. um, you know, my family for many generations has been helping our community and I think I just had very good mentors and my mom and dad um, and they inspired me to continue to help people. Um, When I had the opportunity to work at the legislature and that was after many people had asked if I would serve, um, you know, I could impact a much broader group of people and I love working with people so at the legislature you get to meet so many different people mm-hmm. of diverse backgrounds and they are the ones that really helped the legislature including myself as a legislator mm-hmm. um, pass really good legislation mm-hmm. and I'm hopeful that quite a bit of the laws that we passed over the past few decades um, are being implemented and I'm hoping to help with that uh, in my new role as program coordinator for Lanakila Multipurpose Senior Center, um, but also on serving on a number of committees and boards to make sure that our housing, um, affordable housing is done, environmental protection type things, uh, food and energy self uh, sustainability is a passion of mine, and of course the children and elders, um, and just supporting our Hawaii's families. So the public service continues, and yes. there's really no such thing as retirement. <laughs> no, I actually never said I was going to retire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just said I wasn't going to run. I really wanted to help um, implement a lot of our laws. Right. Well, just looking back at your fruitful career um, in the Senate uh, and at, in the House of Representatives, what are a few things that you look back upon fondly, and you know, mm. and, and you enjoy doing, and maybe a couple of achievements that you really um, 
like to reflect on? Mm -hmm. um, I really am proud of creating the Keiki Caucus. Mm -hmm. That's something that allows not only our legislators that have a passion for children and youth, um, but the community to come together and really do a, an environmental scan every year of how child well-being in Hawaii is doing, mm -hmm. um, what things you really need to focus on to make life better for our children. Um, so that was really neat in 1990s when we created that. Um, we also created something called the Rental Housing Trust Fund that I really applaud um, my colleagues, Representative Isbell from the Big Island, Representative Duke Bainham at the time, and Representative Anil Amaral. All four of us had a housing summit at the legislature, mm -hmm. and it gave rise to one of the things, which was Rental Housing Trust Fund. Right. That has allowed a number of developers to build truly affordable units. Mm -hmm. um, and it continues to do so. So I'm very happy that the legislature continues to fund the Rental Housing Trust Fund through the Bureau of Conveyance Tax, um, but also they infuse state general funds into right. that Rental Housing Trust Fund to build thousands of new units. Um, I also am very happy that we created the Hawaii Children's Trust Fund. Oftentimes when the economy goes down, um, the prevention programs are the first to go. Right. The after-school programs, the you know anything that doesn't isn't like a tertiary kind of care. You really are supporting and nurturing at a very early um, part of one's life, so that we don't have the negative, um, I guess, life experiences and and problems later. Right. So that children's trust fund. You know, it has, I think, now maybe 20 million mm -hmm. around there. Um, and basically, it helps to fund prevention programs, even when the economy is down. Mm -hmm. So it's to supplement what the government is able to do. Right. So those are some uh, that I really look Just a few, on. but those are really impactful. Yes. Right, that that okay. were initiated. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to do that, I mean, everybody's needing funding for their projects, mm -hmm. their programs. Um, what was key for you to helping to, um, I'll say, bridge the gap, make sure people understood that these things were important, mm -hmm. and then, you know, get these things passed? What, what do you think was attributable to that for it's you? It's really important that we organize the community and the stakeholders, whether they're in support of something or not, all the different viewpoints to facilitate that conversation way before making a law or making a bill. Because once people come together, and I love facilitating that, <laughs> um, you know, they may be enemies at the beginning, but at the end they're working together and they actually come up with something, uh, solutions that could be government solutions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but oftentimes is community solutions. Right doesn't require any law changes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Starting that conversation right. inspires cooperation. And to trust that um, everyone will share from their point of view why they may have concerns, and then w working on it together to make sure whatever is proposed is something that everyone actually supports. Right. So just by that kind of, um, to me, that's the hard work. Right. And that's during the interim be between the sessions. Um, then one session happens, of course it's an, introduced as a bill or a resolution. Mm -hmm. um, there's many people in the public can, that can testify on these proposals. Mm -hmm. And in the end, um, we oftentimes pass things a lot quicker. Um, some things, no, it took 10 years, mm -hmm. sometimes 15 years. But, and you have to have perseverance That's right. and encourage the community that, you know, there are things we still have to work on mm -hmm. to make sure it is good before right. passing. Um, but we also, I think, have to show good faith as a community. Mm -hmm. What can we do um, and not have to ask government for that? Right. And so it's been fun at the senior center because um, a lot of things I used to preach um, like being more self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. At these 
even when I got to the senior center, we had 32 classes. Um, we're up to 48 different classes now. And we doubled the number of special events, but our budget is still the same, mm. if not lower. Is that just on um, volunteer participation yes. and community involvement? Yes. Right. So we have, um, of the 48 classes, there most of the instructors, actually all but two, there's about 80 instructors and assistant mm -hmm. instructors, are all volunteers. Wow, that's great. And they take the time every week, maybe twice or even three times a week, to right. teach these different classes that the seniors really want. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really wanted everyone to practice sustainability. So we started a food hub. Okay. We actually grow our food. People can harvest whatever things. <laughs> it's it's mini right now. Yeah. But a um, nutritious and richly liha soy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's right. The water comes from about, the springs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. So we have that and we have um I wanted a flower and fern hub so that people can pick flowers and fern and share it with the community. They can decorate, they can use it for their halals or, you know, whatever. Right. But just sharing with the broader community. So that's been a lot of fun. And it's I think fun. every government office, every business, um, every nonprofit, every family can yeah. do something yeah. to add to our sustainability. You know, but it does leadership and a cheerleader mm -hmm. to make sure all these things actually fall into place. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess what I see is you've always had that commitment to um, serve it, public service, uh, to just serving out of the goodwill um, of who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people kind of respond to that, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. how you get that engagement by others in the community. Yes, it's right? been exciting. Yeah. And I think people are really genuine about wanting to help each other. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the talent that is out there, right. oh my God. Um, if you look at the 1,600 members of our center, every person has had a career of some sort, mm -hmm. even those that stayed home and took care of their children. Right. So the experience, you know, we have teachers, librarians, engineers, architects, mm -hmm. we have people that run government offices, um, entertainers, people in the hotel area, business owners, I mean, so the, the brain trust right. that's there. And now with... Um, one out of every four people who are 60 years and older mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And in 10 years, it'll be one out of three people. Right. But that, to me, we have so much untapped talent right. and knowledge that we can use. Right. So I'm and looking forward to more people really identifying that as yeah. an opportunity. Contributing and you're living longer. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, they got to keep going. Yeah. You know, there's so much more they can do. Yes, definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. So what motivates you to continue going? I mean, you could kind of take it easy right now. <laughs> I, I don't know if your foot is, uh, you know, slightly coming off the gas pedal. <laughs> but what does motivate you? Um, I just like the happiness that comes from the work. Right. <clears throat> and I just love, um, I just love seeing people in just doing great things right. and uh, I hope I can help in that way to really bring out a lot of that positive, very valuable um, talent mm -hmm. in the work that I do and I know there's so many others um, that feel that way too. I know both of you are are also like that. So That's I why we're here. Too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Susie, we want to hear more about you and also what Lanikila Senior Center is doing these mm, days. Sure. Uh, right after this commercial break. Okay. Welcome back. If you just join us, uh, we have Suzanne Chan Open. Uh, she is the program coordinator at Lanikila Multi Purpose Senior Center. And in the first segment, uh, we learned a lot about your background. Um, but I wanted to uh, dive into this, uh, this the senior center because mm -hmm. I think. Um, it's going to benefit a lot of our listeners. And uh, first of all, uh, where is this senior center? Uh, sure. If you can share. Lanakila Senior Center, if you folks know where Lanakila Health Center is on Lanakila Avenue in Leliha, 
yes. where a lot of people get their yeah, TB shots. Correct, yes. We're right below that in a single story building. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And it's right across from the Joy Dessa or Lanakila ballpark. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then this is a program of Catholic Charities. Yes, it's one of 30 programs. Mm -hmm. Originally in 1969, the state of Hawaii started this senior center. Mm. It was um, a result of the Older Americans Act. Mm -hmm. And Hawaii was the first state to actually take advantage of that opportunity in the nation. So the senior center was built in 1969. Um, the University of Hawaii did a study on it. Honolulu Community College ran it. Mm. So they actually had classes there, et cetera. Um, and in that three-year pilot kind of research time period, they found that when the seniors are socially engaged, mm -hmm. they are active, they recreate together, um, exercise, you know, socialize, the longevity of a person really is much longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the quality of the life mm -hmm. you rarely do we see our members going into nursing care homes um, they are active till the day they pass away and our average age is 84. wow wow mm -hmm. yeah wow. um but yes our oldest i think right now is she's 103. wow <laughs> is she the record holder I don't think so. No. no, I don't know. But I know that we're expecting much more centenarians in the future. Yeah, so, um, but if you talk to the seniors, it's so cute because they'll say, like this one lady, she said, I'm too busy to be old. <laughs> She's always in all these different classes um, and just loves being and talking with her friends mm -hmm. that she's made there. And, mm -hmm. and speaking of classes, uh, mm -hmm. what, what classes do you guys, uh, what programs, classes, mm -hmm. the, the folks offer? Um, well, we have quite a number of classes, anything from three-dimensional origami. Um, we have different forms of ukulele, taisho koto, which is a smaller version of the koto instrument that mm -hmm. Japanese play. We have um, brain exercises, American Sign Language. We have um, ping pong, line dancing, mm -hmm. um, tai, different forms of Tai Chi, fan and sword Tai Chi, mm -hmm. sit down Tai Chi, just in case people need to build up their core strength. Because mm -hmm. some folks, you know, they may have fallen or gotten injured and then they have to get stronger again. So we have a sit down Tai Chi that is research based, evidence based, and that strengthens your core mm -hmm. so that you will hopefully it prevents additional falls. Mm -hmm. Um, we have things that maybe people are not as familiar with, Sambodan, which is a Korean breathing exercise, mm -hmm. stretch and tone. We have um, different performing groups, so Sing for Your Life. Um, we have Harmonies Hula, Happy Senior Serenaders, Victor's Kapakahi Group. Those are all, um, they love playing instruments and dancing, and they go out in the community and basically perform for many different groups. Oh. Um, we also have things like tap dancing, which is kind of unusual. Not too many people have tap dancing. Uh, Mahjong, of course, Hanafuda. We have something starting next year, which is called Gentle Yoga, and it's by a television personality oh. whose mom was a member there, and she wants to now give back. We have now many generations of seniors mm -hmm. where uh, children and grandchildren of the, the original members of the center are now members. Oh. So it's pretty neat to see that. Andrew, even our neighbors, a lot of our neighbors are there. Oh. <laughs> Andrew and I live nearby to each yeah. other. So it's pretty neat. And we have something called the Men and Women Shed Program. The Men and Women Shed Program is a repair, um, craft, construction type thing. Um, and so a lot of our seniors want to learn home repair so they can mm. be more independent. Mm. Anyway, that's a part of it. Then we have seven cultural clubs. We have Japanese, Chinese, Okinawan, Korean, Hawaiian, Portuguese, and Filipino clubs. And you don't have to be of that ethnicity to be a member, um, but you do learn a lot about the different cultures that I mentioned. 
we're hoping to have more cultural clubs because there's so many more uh, cultures here in Hawaii. But the officers basically to uh, basically plan the entire year's worth of entertainment, of you know birthday celebrations, um, whatever the seniors want, they basically coordinate it. So, well, yeah. so it sounds. I mean, you folks it sounds like you folks have a lot of programs mm -hmm. and classes, and so this is. Uh, I guess these things happen throughout the day, or what? Is there a certain time period? Our um, um, business hours are from seven thirty in the morning until three p.m. Mm -hmm. um, a number of us uh, on staff still work after that time or before that hour. Oh, um, and it's just five of us that are on staff. Uh -huh. We have two hundred fifty volunteers. Wow, they are center members that volunteer, oh. and we have another hundred fifty community volunteers that help with special kinds of things. We have a volunteer appreciation day, a Valentine's day, a health and wellness fair, candidates fair, Christmas program, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. veterans program, memorial program. Uh, those are all special events. We have about 20 of them. Mm 